This is a short preview of the lecture video on the topic antipotum hemorrhage, role of ultrasound. Available on the ultrasound educational website, sonoshare.in. This is only a preview and the main lecture is available on subscription on the site. Short uh, clippings of the uh, various parts of the lecture video will follow. Having gone through the preview, if you wish to listen to the main lecture video, go to sonoshare.in. Antipotum hemorrhage is bleeding from 24 plus uh, zero weeks of pregnancy up to the birth of the baby. It occurs in small uh, uh, number of cases and the indeter indeterminate um, uh, cause, that is cause is not known in about 40% of cases. And uh, we have to look specifically for the retroplacental area and look for accessory loop. All these are important um, in uh, uh, diagnosis of APH. So this is the sagittal sweep uh, uh, from side to side. Placenta is lateral. The, its relation to the internal os cannot be assessed. So that is a disadvantage. So how to overcome uh, this uh, in a lateral placenta? So you make a sweep transfer when the placenta comes down. So when you see a low lying placenta, a follow up ultrasound examination including if necessary a TVS should be done after 32 weeks of gestation to uh, confirm or rule out placenta previa. And uh, if it is mild with lengthening of the lower segment, the placenta move, uh, can, may move away. So a partial placenta previa may uh, turn out to be normal with the development of the lower uterine uh, segment. So here, uh, this is the uh, anterior uh, placenta. Now here you see the anterior placenta comes up to the edge of the internal loss. So when the internal loss dilates, it will partially cover the internal Next uh, contraction, so cervix is actually very far away from the placental margin. So this is a common case of false positive diagnosis of placenta previa. Now another false positive uh, uh, cause is over distended bladder. When the bladder is over distended, the anterior and posterior walls of the uh, uterine are opposed. As a result, they mimic the uh, not be assessed in a transverse scan or a sagittal scan. So uh, a transverse sweep has to be done and if the placenta comes low down, then you do a coronal scan and uh, you uh, actually placenta, but it is not a <coughs> partial or complete placenta previa as seen on the trans abdominal scan. Next condition is vasa previa, which is fetal vessel running in the free placental membranes within 2 centimeters of the cervix. So that is the vessels come um, in front of the internal loss. It is a rare condition occurs in 1 in 2500 quinceriate lobe uh, are crossing the uh, internal loss. So you see the main, placent main placenta here with the cord insertion and the circunturiate lobe. So the vessels to reach the circunturiate lobe have to cross the internal loss resulting in a vasa previa. So these are the two types of vasa previa. Now vasa previa ultrasound has a, a screening role in the second trimester normally scan because identification of the placental cord insertion uh, uh, is one of the uh, requisites in the anomaly scan and it is easy and accurate. So once uh, card insertion is identified, then we uh, uh, rule out a, a vasa previa. So here there is uh, uh, the placenta and the wall and the vessels cross to the posterior uh, uh, placenta. So here you see the velamentous insertion of the card and uh, placenta is posterior. So here uh, when uh, the go uh, little uh, side, you see the cervix, the internal loss, and you see the vessels uh, uh, crossing uh, the internal loss to reach the posterior placenta with a velamentous insertion of the card. So that is the video showing the when the second is concealed abruption, 
where the blood collects behind the placenta and uh, which, which with no evidence of vaginal bleeding this is uh, uh, this uh, the, in this situation concealed abruption the complications are severe because there is no visible bleeding now diagnosis of placental abruption is clinically done uh, because the, of the classic triad abdominal abdominal or pelvic pain vaginal bleed and uterine tenderness patient will be uh, uh, from 1 to 2 weeks so that is anechoic after 2 weeks it almost mimics fluid and real time you may see movement so that is anechoic abruption so that is the appearance over uh, time uh, in a case of uh, retroplacental clot now in revealed abruption the hematoma is marginal so that is the placenta from the margin the, the bleeding extends and it may be there may be visible bleeding outside so that is another example of marginal hematoma <coughs> or it can be retromembranous hematoma uh, away from the placental margin as seen here it may be uh, that is the placental margin extending from the margin they can leak and cause um, uh, vaginal bleeding it's very very rare but it, it is one of the causes and in real time you see the flow in the dilated veins in the cervix cervical uh, varices so that is the local cause it may be other local causes like a cervical polyp uh, which are amenable to a clinical diagnosis now coming to the <coughs> role of ultrasound in management of APH it is um, useful to <coughs> look for the fetal heart pulsations if it is present reassuring and uh, if uh, IUD has occurred it may be diagnosed and the gestation age uh, is important uh, to manage because uh, to avoid a preterm uh, delivery and cervical length increases uh, chance of um, preterm labor and uh, uh, profuse hemorrhage and of course in a case of placenta previa accreta uh, may be associated which has to be ruled out. 